This Gold Coast laboratory is inching closer to something that was long thought impossible, a vaccine for a strep A infection. It's a very clever pathogen. It knows how to get around the host immune system. And that's how it has been just going and going and there hasn't been any cure. The Griffith and Alberta University research teams have found a way of outsmarting strep A by targeting a key molecule. If it all goes well, we will have progressed through the clinical trials and have a vaccine ready in three to four years. It's very exciting, yeah, no, it's, it's truly exciting. There are up to eight potential vaccines being developed around the world, but the one Professor Michael Good's team is working on will be the first to be tested on infected humans. We will actually vaccinate volunteers, hope to do this next year, and then give them a deliberate strep infection to see whether that infection can boost the antibody response that we've induced in the, in the vaccinees by, by the vaccine. Repeated exposure to strep A leads to the life-threatening and incurable rheumatic heart disease, which kills more than 300,000 people worldwide each year. It's a disease that is often related to overcrowding, poor nutrition and poverty. I originally come from India and I have seen cases, you know, around me, in my family, in my community. So I am very passionate about this disease and really want something to be done for this. But you don't have to go as far as India to find rheumatic heart disease. Some of the world's highest rates of the disease are in Australia, in remote indigenous communities. A country like Australia, an affluent country like Australia, with one of the best health systems in the world, um, with some of the best health, comes, health outcomes in the world as well, should now not have a disease like this. Hey, how are you, Grass? Dr Mark I'm Winnetong you, has worked extensively in remote communities. While he's excited about a possible vaccine, he says it won't solve everything. It certainly would be a game changer, um, having a, an effective vaccine for strep A. That doesn't take away from the fact, though, that we shouldn't have this disease in the first place and that it should be preventable um, and it should be eradicatable as well. The tragedy of this disease was highlighted in a coronial inquest last year into the deaths of three young women from the Queensland Gulf community of Dumaji, which found serious shortcomings in the local health system. Dr Winnetong says since then there have been moves to improve the health workforce, but that alone won't stop the spread of strep A infections. The problem is of course is that we're just going to be getting more and more continually as housing isn't fixed and um, kids are still going to get group A in skin infections and throat infections as well and we've got to figure out some way of just stopping that. Housing is critical and not just for rheumatic heart disease. A whole number of diseases and other issues that are impacted by poor housing, lack of um, maintenance of housing, lack of water. We have about 260,000 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in this country who don't have running water. Improved housing will take time. In the shorter term, a partial solution has been the introduction of remote laundry services. Housing, as I'm sure you know, is a a big item to resolve, but uh, we certainly thought we could assist with a solution for washing and drying. This Darwin-based operation services four remote communities. I know young people who have rheumatic heart disease, so the need is real. A similar service is offered by Orange Sky across northern, central and western Australia. As a result, some communities have recorded dramatic falls in the rate of scabies. The flow-on effects from scabies is strep A, acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. It's a small jigsaw piece in a bigger challenge, which is eradicating rheumatic heart disease by 2031, the end game, they call it. This goal of ending rheumatic heart disease in Australia was launched by the Telethon Kids Institute with support from leading health organisations three years ago. I think we're right at the beginning of that, such a plan. Oh, I think it's a good idea to set a deadline, but realistically, it's going to take longer and a concentrated effort by everybody. 
the challenge has been coordinating different programs with different levels of government and securing long-term funding. And lots of this is not to do with health, this is to do with how the Australian government and um, state and territory governments deal with Aboriginal and Torres Strait people and how they harmonise the way they approach um, their dealings as well. That's why Yes campaigner Noel Pearson singled out rheumatic heart disease as an example of where a voice to parliament could make a real difference. It is a disease of the unlistened to. It is a disease of a people who have spoken but have not been heard. It's a message vaccine researcher Professor Good believes is still relevant. The vaccine is only one solution. What I would suggest the government needs to do is listen very carefully to Indigenous Australians and see what their solutions are. It's issues like this though that make politicians and health professionals sometimes think that things are intractable because they look that way. But that's a load of rubbish. In, in actual fact, this is completely, um, we, can, we can deal with this in Australia um, totally 